Hey, BMX nerds, welcome back. Uh, Devin Smiley is an X Games decorated professional athlete, BMX rider, rides for Etnies and Fly Bikes. Um, and I knew him like a little bit just through BMX, but then we linked up on Fortnite and played Fortnite together for like a year. And so I got to become friend friendly with him and I consider Devin a homie now. And so I was stoked when he said he was down to do a podcast. We covered, we went like natural conversation style from mental health to breaking down his video part that he just dropped with Etnies. And uh, yeah, it's just, it was a fun conversation. So I'm excited to share this one with you guys. If you're on YouTube, hit that bell, please. And that's it. Send me a nice message. <clears throat> tell, me to, tell me to keep going. Wow, my voice. There was one more thing. Yeah, who who else do you want to see on on the old Canode Nose BMX based podcast? Anyway, here's Devin Smiley. Dude, I was just listening to uh your the come up interview from seven years ago. But I was listening oh, to it. God. And it was good. And I was listening to it. I those were like the golden days of the come up and Adam and Catfish and Began are all interviewing you and Francis was there. But I was lis I'm listening yeah, yeah. to it on two times speed or like one point five times speed, and Catfish's voice was cracking me up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so how about your friend Abdullah doing all mind altering drugs in Barcelona? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, one sec. I'm gonna change audio over real quick. Yeah. All right. All right. So first, I can't remember when we first met. Do you remember? Was it? Did we hang out when I came to Arizona on a dance trip? No, that sounds no. vaguely familiar with. Yeah, Stu no. Stu filming. I, yeah, I think it was with Stu Shane, possibly. And Maybe then, it was through Kyle Carlson. Could have been. I I never really went anywhere other than Vegas or San Diego with Kyle, though. I never. I only went to Arizona one time, and that was. Actually, no, I had been there twice. Second time was with on the claw trip, but that would have been well after we met for the first time, I'd imagine. It's trippy that I can't remember. I feel like I no. got to know <laughs> you through Fortnite. Like that's what's funny though. I'm like, I'm probably one of the worst with memories with coming like trying to remember when I met people for the first time or even like first memories. I don't know why. Like I my memory of the past is just so vague. Like, I just don't remember anything, really. I don't you're, know. You're telling me, dude. I don't know if it was, like, I was young or what, but... Or I'm just, like, always looking forward, you know? I never really look back. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing sunglasses because your future is too bright. Um. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, no, it is kind of funny, though. When we started gaming, that was, like... Actually, when we started connecting and communicating a bit more. Yeah, I was, I think I started playing with you when I was at my fattest. And then we talked about health shit and then, you know, played together with Tay for, I don't even know how long. And you, All <laughs> like two, two years we played Fortnite, I think, right? All it took was you quitting playing video games to get skinny. <laughs> no, the video games <laughs> saved me. Video games, it took me quitting drinking and then just using that nighttime anxiety and putting it into video games. That's what oh, that's so what happened. That was the reason that I wouldn't go out and get drunk or like drink a bunch of beers at home alone. That's yeah. probably the biggest piece. I didn't know it was like that for you with drinking. Yeah, I'm I'm an addict. So when I was like if I get into a habit of drinking every night, I'll like there was and throw in like depression on top of that there was a period yeah. where i'm drinking you know a bottle and a half of wine and then ordering two meals from the local pizza joint and just housing that down at like midnight and just you know not not giving a shit about myself no i know exactly what you mean yeah i feel like uh, a lot of people go through something like that pretty similar yeah have you ever uh, you ever been through depression or a cycle of it i feel like we all do but when was your last uh... one I've been through it pretty heavily two times. Um, I, I've like opened up to a few people about it and like I'm at the point where I'm not even, I don't know, I'm like very open about it just because I feel like awareness on the whole situation is pretty 
big thing for a lot of people, especially people who have never opened up about it. So seeing other people or hearing other people's experiences will probably help people reach out to others instead of holding everything in, hopefully. Um, but first, my first experience was like a couple years after I first moved to California. Um, and it was kind of weird because it wasn't like I had been partying or anything. It was like I was like a kid or whatever. And yeah, I like drank and smoke every here and there. But it was I think I moved here so young and then kind of just left everything behind. And uh, I almost viewed everything I was doing like it was for other people. And I didn't feel that I had any type of connection with people if that makes sense yeah like I went from having all of these like great friendships and like deep like deep level connections with people that I can have conversations with for hours to like just feeling like I was by myself pretty much you know yeah and being away from uh, family yeah so I mean I I held it all in and like never really like spoke with anyone about it and then I remember one day my parents calling me and like asking me how I was doing and I just like broke down and then that kind of turned into like oh well you need some help blah 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 and originally I feel like they had mentioned something like I needed help and I was like no I'm fine like blah 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 like I don't know I would just almost like I was just against getting help at one point for some reason I don't know why but I finally caved in and then I went to the almond clinic luckily family paid for that because it's like fairly expensive but it's basically it's like a different type of machine but pretty much like a like a brain scan i don't know like similar to mri or like cat scan i don't really know what it is necessarily but um i did that answered a bunch of personality questions or whatever like 200 questions for personality stuff and then went in one week and did like an attention test where I sat in a room and stared at a screen and a letter would pop up on the screen. And if an X popped up, you press space bar. And they they were like, all right, we're gonna do like a practice test, blah, blah, blah. Did that really quick, got a hundred percent, didn't mess up once. And then they were like, all right, we're gonna do the test for real. And like, you know, it got serious and I'm like starting to do this test or whatever. And of course, like I'm like trying to press X or like trying to press space bar when these numbers come up. And like, of course I mess up one time and they're like, all right, you did like 95%. So it's kind of weird that like I mess up whenever I'm like under the pressure of something being for real, but then basically put me in brain scan for like 20 minutes after that. Um, and I was done for that day, came back two weeks later. And then they were like, all right, sit in this dark room for 15 minutes. Like, don't think about anything in particular just let your mind water wander and i was like what am i supposed what am i doing here oh. like what am i supposed to be thinking about i just automatically started freaking out and then they give you a scan after that and then it turns out that if i'm not focused on something or like putting my attention into something my brain is going like absolute haywire like just complete chemical imbalance at that point oh and that's they, interesting yeah so they were um they were pretty much like, yeah, um, we can like help you out. You can do prescription pharmaceutical stuff, or we can do like over the counter natural remedy kind of thing or supplements, that type of thing. And I was like, uh, at that point, at least I was, I didn't feel like I wanted to do any kind of pharmaceutical stuff. I just heard nothing good about it at that point. And, um, uh, I went the natural route. And he basically told me to buy certain milligram sizes of, I think it was like omega-3, uh, GABA, and 5-HTP. Yeah. And all of all of those three like put together kind of like. Those are the building work. blocks for serotonin and dopamine, I think. Yeah, like yeah. Was. Yeah, so it was like, I think 5-HTP was like the mood enhancer and then GABA was like the brain calmed down like uh, it basically just like mellowed you out a little bit and then omega threes kind of helped everything work together, I yeah. guess. And, uh, so I did that for a while and I went from having a good day once a week to like a good day every other day and then a good day to every day. 
Nice. And uh, eventually just stopped. And I was like, so in the zone of like knowing what good days were like that I got to the point where I felt like I didn't need it. I just kind of felt like I could control my uh, emotions on my own at that point in a way. Um, so I was good for a little bit. <laughs> and that was like the first kind of experience that I had with it because um yeah at that point I don't know I had like multiple days where I was like I don't even I have like no reason to live like I, I don't know it's like a very selfish thing to think like but like Not that yet. was honestly how I felt you know that's real um so I was good for a few years after that and then I kind of like got into drinking and ended up partying a bit and that kind of led me into black hole of a sort you know yeah and uh that went from me i i and especially with like the previous kind of cycle that i had been through dealing with depression i think it put me in somewhere darker like so much quicker and uh oh yeah but I, the the reason why they said that i was the way i was from the scans like they showed me I'm kind of like bouncing around right now. I'm going oh, back to the first, first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the reason why they were like saying my brain was, was the way it was is from like head trauma growing up pretty much. Cause I like, I couldn't tell you how many times I've been knocked out. Like, yeah. And it's, that's real. it's, it's kind of crazy like growing up and then hearing of like football players and CTE and stuff. And you're like, uh, like, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> do you like, you think about it is that going to be something that you're going to deal with later on in life and i'm even still to that point like maybe i would be different if i didn't hit my head so much but same here dude that's yeah. what i was gonna ask when we were talking about memories and how you can't remember anything because i've knocked myself out like plenty of times just living life but also in bmx and i think yeah. that is affecting why i can't remember my 20s <laughs> on yeah, top of the I, you know partying <laughs> i i I like to think like my cognitive brain works excellent, but then when it comes to like social stuff, I am, that's where I start to kind of like malfunction. I feel, How I, so? I don't know. Like I feel like I'm not to my full capable speaking ability in a way. <laughs> like I, I, I'm, freak out in front of crowds like i can't speak in front of a camera properly like yeah. i feel like i'm doing okay now because it's like i'm talking to you like you're my friend so yeah it's a bit easier but even still like i'll be talking and i'm thinking about what i'm saying and i'm like overthinking every little thing i just think too much that's what it comes yeah. down to really self-aware yeah <clears throat> which so, is like you have to take the good with the bad being self-aware is such a good thing and like look at how far you've gotten in life with just like being aware of like what's going on but at the same time it can be like crippling when you're having a conversation with somebody but all you're thinking about is how are they perceiving what i'm saying why did i just say the thing that i just said and i can relate so hard to yeah, that I, I i talked to my neighbor like i spoke with one of my neighbors that i've lived, lived next to for like three years for the first time in my life the other day <laughs> nice congrats and I was like, <laughs> but the, after it i was like they probably thought I was so weird. Like, I don't, I didn't feel like myself, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. It's just really funky. So I've had that same shit walking around my like little uh, condo complex, walking, taking trip on a nightly walk. It, I'm also on edibles, but I, it's just, it's just like <laughs> nighttime edibles and I'm walking trip and then a really nice neighbor will come out and like start a conversation and I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. It's oh it. boy. Like, are you do you still um consume cannabis products yeah every night every night i Did, take uh like 10 milligrams of indica with cbn to nice. help me sleep it, so yeah, that's how i feel like with the kind of i don't know just awkward things that i deal with i can't consume anything otherwise it just like enhances everything you know 100 like, percent. me too like if somebody offers me a hit of a joint like you know i'm not partaking especially in the middle of the day because then i'm yeah. just in my own head times a thousand and yeah. yeah i see like i was just with westcott 
in Venice and we're pedaling around and he's just roll in between spots, rolling up blunts. And I'm just like, I have no idea how you can pull that shit off. Dude. Yeah. I, and some people can just do it. And like, I don't know, like I, I was at one point in my life where I was kind of like cruising around like that. And I was pretty heavy in that game, but I don't Same. know. In the past, like I slowly got out of it. And then I don't know if it was, something i was coping with or like it it made life easier for some reason but i i got to a point where i felt good enough mentally to that to the point where i felt like i didn't need it and i enjoyed being sober more than anything like i started out with just going out riding and i was like i appreciate how i feel on my bike i feel a lot better riding i feel stronger i feel just more energetic and uh more focused more consistent energy and then um my emotions were better during the day and everything, you know, That's and then, uh, one night I just had like a crazy anxiety attack and that was pretty much like one of the last times I actually, um, partook in that part, <laughs> partook is it partake, partake <laughs> partook is, it, I partook it in it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Haley's calling me right now. I'll have to yeah, answer pick it that up. in a You're second. Fine. Can I? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, you're not going to leave the Zoom call. It'll just put it on pause. All right, yeah, I'm going to press hold and accept one sec. All right, so... That's a perfect transition. Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> so, yeah, I was talking about um, anxiety It's sober, attack. and you're, yeah. you're riding well. And, uh, yeah, how are... Like, we've been texting about health shit lately. How's your, how's your routine? How's your workouts? What are you... So... I don't know. For people who don't know, I think you got two X Games medals this year. One in yeah. Japan and one just recently. So I, I yeah. yeah. I got my uh I recently got my fourth X Games medal, which was the bronze. Congrats. So I got a silver in Japan and bronze at the in Vista a couple of days ago. Amazing. And uh those are those are each my second silver and bronze so i have two of each and i need to win a gold yeah <laughs> i'm also uh turning 30 this year so i'm getting to that point in my life where i'm like all right i know that like what i'm doing isn't gonna last forever so i'm trying to make the most of it and it's kind of kind of crazy that i'm at this age and kind of like taking myself seriously i i have this feeling that if i don't take myself seriously as an athlete and like other people might not 100 percent. and that's it's it feels like super corny because i feel like me 10 years ago wouldn't i would hey, I'm yeah like, yeah i was always just like oh dude you got to be like core blah 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 whatever you know like yeah. but I, I don't know man i all i know is that like the more i take care of myself and the more i like give myself structure and have a routine like I feel better physically. I feel better mentally. And all of that just leads to me feeling better on my bike. Like yeah. it's, it's honestly like I've had the best year of my life riding the past year, like yes. competing, not only like competing wise, but, um, just going out and riding, like going to the park, having sessions, going out with Eddie and filming, like, I feel like I'm filming some of my best stuff at the moment. And then just having good sessions. I'm like learning nose manuals like after 10 minutes 10 i saw years, that like yeah it, like i'm on like a kick right now with nose manuals i'm addicted to it because i i just had something click in my head and like it's the best now. feeling trick it's the best yeah. feeling balance trick because it's like oh, oh, oh yeah shit. exactly opposite whips that's another one like i i do one every time i'm at the skate park just about now just to like because i always thought that was the coolest trick and i could never do them and it was like just stressful so I would almost get upset that I couldn't do them. Same thing with nose manuals. So it's like I'm breaking down like these mental barriers that I got right now. And I love that. It's uh, it's kind of just opening doors for me. And, and the, the older you get, the harder it is to progress and learn new tricks. Like literally because of your brain, like plasticity, it's harder. To, you have to put in more effort to learn and that's, new tricks. That's, that's what I'm afraid of. That's why I'm like doing what I am now and trying to like make the most of it. Cause I'm, uh, I'm afraid of like hitting that wall, you know, yeah. 
Well, you won't if you keep like your brain exercise. Like I'm listening to podcasts with smart fuckers talking about this and they're like, you have to like keep changing. You know, if you're driving to work the same route every single day, you just become like dug into this thing. So you have to like constantly switch things up, like take a different, you know, different route to the grocery store or just like constantly keeping your brain like on edge or trying to learn a new thing that has nothing to do with BMX, you know, like trying to get into, you know, a video game, for example, that is like exercise for your brain and all that. But what are you doing? Yeah. So you said it's the best year of your life. What, what changed to the, to um, the year before? So, I mean, let me, let me think about this. So it kind of goes back to, no, this goes back to before quitting smoking and that whole area. Basically, like I bought a dirt bike right at the beginning of 2021. And I was like going to the track a lot and trying to ride like long motos. And the most I could do would be like seven laps before I'd feel like cooked. And then I think I was watching like outdoor supercross and started watching those guys. And I was like, these dudes are like some of the top most elite athletes. Yeah. on a bike not only on a bike but like in the world so like i was imagining trying to get myself in some sort of shape to the point where i'm like i could see myself being like a, a super cross racer that's kind of what i'm like comparing my training to guarantee you i'm not training anything as hard as that but for what i'm doing it's not as gnarly as supercross. I don't have to ride a 20 minute moto. So it's like, I feel like my trainings can be different a little bit easier, yeah. but still like for someone like me, who's never done any sort of training, it's going to be like a huge step for me. When did and, you start? Uh, racing motocross? No race or, or training training. Um, yeah. um, so it took me a little while. I like rode motocross for a year before going to the gym but that was kind of like after that year of riding that made me feel like i needed to get more into shape and uh i started going to the gym last july so it's it's going on like almost a year exactly now Boom. and that was uh i was really researching a lot of like dieting and stuff like that before and uh around the same time where like i quit smoking i started like to quit drinking because uh, it would even if it was like a glass of wine at night or something like that like i was trying to like eliminate all of these things out of my life to try and just be as clean as possible yeah um, if you're if you're like a pro level athlete there's no glass of wine at night you know yeah, there's a glass exactly. of wine after you win the championship but then it's yeah. right back to it exactly like and the one of the other hardest things recently is like nicotine like i quit vaping over a month ago and all this my yeah exactly and it's like i see it and i want it and it sucks and it's probably the hardest thing ever to quit but that's probably like the most attached you can get to something like and that made me feel disgusting about myself like how dependent i was on that it was bad yeah i don't feel yeah, too I good think, about it <laughs> dude, it sucks man like i flew to japan and like I don't know why, but I was kind of tripping about customs taking vapes and because I researched it and apparently like the sale of vapes with nicotine in it is illegal there. So wow. I'm like, oh, like if they find it in my bag, they're probably going to take it. And sure enough, they didn't care. But still that that little thought of like, dude, if they take my vapes when I get there, like I'm going to freak out. And that <laughs> yeah, that really hit me, you know. Cause I, that happened when we went to, I went to Mexico, like ended last year. And like, we walked through, like we, you walk through the border through like cross border express to go to the Tijuana airport. Cause the flights are like a hundred dollars or something. You walk through there and like, you walk through a little custom thing and they're like, Oh, do you guys have these vapes? And we're like, yeah. And I was like, I just bought like three of them to make sure like, I, I yeah, they're all brand new. And he was like, you can't take these. And they took all my vapes. And I was like, <laughs> Like, no yo, yo. so pretty much yeah that's, so how long have you been nicotine another, free now it's probably only been like a month but congrats yeah. bro that's fucking awesome thank you it's been that's i mean it's, it wasn't too bad like i guess 
I started out with like less nicotine. I was doing like 3% and then left it at the house and would hit it once at night and then just eventually stopped hitting it altogether. And it's been pretty good. It's not too bad. I'm, it's kind of weird. Like you still crave it randomly, but if you just like breathe like five deep breaths, like it's weird. It just goes away. No, that's real. You get over it. Yeah. So, but, but honestly, like did you smoke cigarettes at one point too, right? I smoked for a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So day. that's, it's, that's pretty disgusting. That's nothing I'm proud to say, but I mean, it's, it's what I went through, you know, it's my experience. I decided to pick up smoking when I was young because I thought it was cool. And it's like growing up in Georgia, almost everybody smoked cigarettes. Yeah. So it was just really normal. So did that for like 11 years almost and eventually quit and started vaping thinking that it was better but then it just turned into like more convenient of an addiction yeah and it almost 100%. got worse yeah yeah and that lasted probably shoot dude that probably lasted like six years vaping so and i quit for a year but that whole year i quit involved spliffs and it was like i was rolling 50 50 ratio spliffs of cbd yeah so you're smoking leaf. any you're getting yeah, nicotine it, it, yeah. it was basically like i was smoking cigarettes again so it was like yeah. it was kind of pointless so, yeah. um but yeah so no drinking no how long you been no drinking no nicotine uh so i'm not gonna say i i'm not gonna say like i'm not strict i'm not like yeah, edge yeah. on any of this you know like i'm not gonna lie like i hit a little spliff like after celebrating just like up to you, you when know, i or got a medal yeah, at x games yeah exactly get, you get know, like oh uh, so i'll do that like occasionally like i don't know drinking is kind of once on a weekend maybe once every other week special occasions i don't know no, yeah, nothing just getting it out of like the daily routine pretty much yeah like i i think that was like the worst thing for me was just like having it every night you know it being something to like i don't yeah like like you say daily routine you yeah have a glass of wine at dinner every night and it just becomes normal and like next thing you know it's like it's weird not having it yeah <laughs> and it's funny because it's like in i don't know in long term you know i can see myself having that as a routine like having a glass of wine with my girlfriend when i had one was the best sitting and watching netflix and drinking a couple glasses of wine or a couple beers or whatever is the best but like you're at pro athlete mode and you know there's a time and place for it that's yeah i feel i feel like i need to like deserve it in a way unless it's because it like birthday with someone recent like last night i went to like a birthday dinner it's like of course i'm gonna have like a glass of wine if everyone's drinking that kind of thing too but yeah i feel like i need to like have some you know i need to deserve it exactly and that's the other piece is like you, it has to be like you know worth worth the long run is Haley home yes Hi, Haley. What up, though? What's your dog's name again? Hi. hi. That's Ricky. <laughs> that little one's Ricky. Ricky. What's that's up? Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi. Hi. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce has been here the whole time on the couch. Bruce. We got Trip right funny. here. Trip? Yeah, Trip. Yep. Trip hanging Trip. out has in the back. Has he been there the whole time? Yeah. That's kind of crazy. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, oh, I flipped my camera around. Crazy. <clears throat> You're chilling. All right. So another thing that happened in that the come up interview from seven years ago is they asked you your 20 year goal and you were like, I don't think that far ahead. And then Adam was like, what's your five year goal? And you said, girlfriend and house. And I see you've you've accomplished one half. Do you own this house? Are you renting? You, you no, it's a, a rental. Yeah. You're going to buy it's a, a house anytime in the future? Um, Got that X Games down payment money? It's actually it's kind of funny you say that because, like, the past day or two, like, it's been brought up multiple times and it's been something that's like, all right, this is becoming more real of a possibility. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I'm sure I've, you pay attention. You're, like, kind of in real estate. And it's you, a like, scary time. Us, so, yeah, it's pretty insane. It's hard to imagine buying right now. So it's like, I don't know. And we're kind of just playing the waiting game and 
figuring out the numbers of what we would be able to afford and then what we'd be able to put down and what we'd pay each month and yeah. see what we can make work. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that is looking like a year at least. Yeah. It's, it where, it's so where, frustrating thinking about this because I, I'm in the same place. Like I want to buy a house, but I've heard such compelling arguments from both sides of like, just wait out the market. It's going to, you know, stabilize and come back down just, and then there's the other side of just like, it's never well, going to, you know, it's going never going to be the best time. So up. yeah. So just, uh, <laughs> so just do it. And at the end of the day, what matters is your payment and if you can afford it. And that payment is instead of going to your landlord, going to your equity. So it's like the sooner you can get into a house and start making payments towards your equity, the better, you, better off you are. And it's yeah. scary. There's this, there's this deal here where I might have a in to be able to buy a fourplex as an FHA buyer and like house hack and like rent out the other three units and live in one, but it would be like a million dollar house or million dollar fourplex purchase that I don't even know what the down payment would be. in. it's just so scary, dude. I'm just like, maybe I'll just keep renting for a while, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's too easy and like comfortable to just stay renting. Mm -hmm. But that's the other thing is like, are you cool with just giving someone money for something you're not owning? Like, absolutely not. Especially uh, with the service. It feels so gift. weird, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. Say for us, it's hard to beat though, because we're, we're paying less than two grand and you can see the That's water epic. like out of our front door. And I have a garage space. I have like a driveway spot. We have Holy like, a shit. Yeah, you're living. Area. And I mean, it's, it's like fairly small, but for something near the beach, like it's pretty awesome. That's and incredible. Yeah. Location, super good. We can walk to restaurants, walk down to bars. I have like a ride aid I can walk to live right by a gas station hardware store the freeway is literally right behind us so i can just hop on the freeway and get out of here if i want but Got any cool coffee San shops Clemente, so. um yeah there's a couple there's like uh a bear coast but it's way down del mar which is like a massive hill and uh i don't want to walk back up the hill most of it actually i talked to you and you were like talking about walking in the morning and not long ago I did just a random three mile walk. And nice. I was like, right, I'm gonna get out of the house. And I took my dog on a walk and I did walk through the coffee shop. So. Sick. Yeah. But that's the move. We got the drip and the espresso machine here. So I'm kind of like a just not coffee at at home kind of guy, you know. You're a better man than me. Dude. Bucks. I, dude, coffee tax is crazy. <laughs> yeah. are, dude, $5 for just a cup it of is, coffee. It is and embarrassing. I don't really I don't use creamer you. or anything, so it's like I just want a black cup of coffee. I know, same. I just give me the caffeine in the morning, but I got into this new habit of like first thing I do when I wake up is go for a walk the long way to the coffee shop by my house, and it's the only one that's near, like within walking distance. And they, yeah. they, I'm paying six fifty, and then fifty cent tip every single time, and it's like five days a week, and it's just like a ridiculous, stupid way to live. But I rationalize it by saying it's my motivation to go walk. Like I could go walk. And make how coffee at home. A, how long of a walk do you have? Like <laughs> the first first morning walk is maybe like a half hour total, and then I chill out. I do a little bit of work, and then I go to F forty five and been kicking my ass lately. But we were talking before about walking. The thing about it is like it's super dope for weight loss because it doesn't spike your cortisol, but it gets your body moving. So it's like that happy medium of like your yeah yeah metabolism gets going but you're not spiking cortisol which is the hormone that like makes your body want to store yeah. fat stress hormone yeah it's super interesting yeah so, you know it's just you do it do what you can and keep trying to get better i don't think i'm on that pro athlete tip at the moment but i'm trying you know i'm trying to try to i'm trying to get in peak <laughs> physical form that's right. good though i mean it definitely it feels good when you know like you can perform like yeah. i've been i'm going to the gym like four days a week now five days sometimes and i'm like at the point where i'm going enough to where i'm finally like splitting up workouts too so like sick sunday was back and buys yesterday was chest and tries today was all shoulders and then 
gonna go in tomorrow and do like some legs and then maybe cardio stuff and that's what i was gonna ask is cardio how much because like i feel like cardio for you as an x games performer you gotta keep your cardio level pretty high in order to be able to like keep up yeah yes and no i don't know i feel like a 45 second run doesn't really like take all that much out of you like I guess it does make a difference because like the first contest I rode was Japan, like after going to the gym. And I noticed that getting through that run was like, I did, I rode three runs completely fine and felt like I could have kept riding after my run was over even. Yeah. And that, that was, that was a way different feeling than before the last event I rode or whatever. So it does, it does have, or does play a role in that for sure. But, um, I mean, that's like once or twice a year that that really like matters. So do you talk um, to Garrett? Do you know if Garrett does that shit too? Like, you know, trains like a pro athlete or do you think he just rides? I think he just rides from, I, cause pretty sure he just rides every day. Or if he does, like he doesn't show it or tell anyone. I don't know. I don't think I've ever even asked him cause I kind of just assume he doesn't. Yeah. Like I know. I know like a handful of the dudes. I know like Chad's in there a lot for sure. Yeah, I've seen Demarcus, um, Chad. I know Courage does it. Um, that's uh, that's the three off the top of my head. I know Matt Ray's been going to. Oh yeah, Matt Ray, me, obviously. Yeah, because he, I think he's been doing like kickboxing or something like Mike's or some sort of martial arts or something. Just training with a trainer, you know. Yeah, because that's what I was fast doing, twitch muscles. Like, yeah, because I was working, uh, I was doing like kickboxing for cardio. Um, That's fine. Just because it's like, it's more entertaining than any other kind of cardio. Cardio is boring. It so sure is. Anyone. Shit sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so like going hard and punching the bag, it like gets a lot out of you. All right. So I was, so the transition that I was talking about earlier is like Haley called you. And then one of my first questions that I wanted to ask is how are Haley and the dogs and how's, how's, how's your, uh, how's your little family doing? Are you happy? I am more than happy. Everything is just perfect. You know, you, how long have uh, you guys been together? Um, six years. That's wild. So yeah. like a year after the come up interview, you manifested yeah. that shit, dude. That is kind of crazy actually. Yeah. And I have been like, our relationship grew really fast after that. So it was like, or after we first met. So it was like, everything happened super quick. Can I tell him? Do I, do I see a ring on your finger? Are you guys engaged? Yeah. So um, I proposed um, Thanksgiving last year. Yes. And then, come here. Congrats. Got, <laughs> thank you. Come here. I got to show your hand off. This Ooh, is a... we. <laughs> oh we! Oh shit! I did, shit. I did, did that. Good. A little custom ring. I had help from her mom though, because that's like, I mean, I'm probably giving away too much information here, but yeah. I love that. Congrats, man! Thank you. Well, and then, yeah, uh, can I tell another part too? Yeah, might as well. So, um, we pretty much, I guess, if you'd call it, uh, eloped in a way. So we're like officially married now, as of beginning of may that was my next question is when when is the wedding bada bing bada yeah. boom you're officially married <laughs> yeah. i knew it. I, I was looking at your hand that's your left hand right there right yeah yeah nice and that's the bmx wedding band right there exactly the, well the rubber I mean, joint yeah oh you already know the silicone piece man yeah that's I mean, the yeah it's the only the way to go i'm like we're, we actually went to go look at uh gold bands for me just Sweet. hasn't really been like priority there's this i don't know if people rock this as a wedding ring this is the aura ring that like measures your heart rate and shit and tells oh, really? you how you sleep and it tells you how your heart rate variability and like all that shit like gives you a sleep hey, score it's fucking you got a sick. gold one yeah and it's fire it's it looks like a wedding ring i've had girls on bumble now be like are you married and i'm like bitch learn how to figure out which hand is which and yeah picture. i was like that's your right hand right <laughs> yeah Oh, see, so you got the legit webcam on the iPhone screen. Hey, man, all that matters is we're here. That's so, true. Um, you know, I I don't know. Let's let's go through this list here. So you've been sponsored. Uh, I, nah, who cares? You know, 
<laughs> oh wait, you were talking about dogs and how Haley's doing and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, so Haley and I are doing great. That's um, amazing. Yeah, but I think I don't remember if I don't know if you've seen Bruce, but she brought home a pit bull that I didn't want her to bring home, and now I really like him. I think I was still I talking. Him. We were still <laughs> lighting it up, dude, when that yeah. happened. So now we have three dogs in like a pretty small one bedroom apartment. Although Ricky's like half a dog, even though personality he's like full dog. But yeah, is he a barker? Size wise, only if he's excited. Like if he wants to go out for a W, you know, he'll let yeah. you know. Or if he just come home and he wants to be picked up, he'll bark. But that's pretty much the only other. I love he's it. pretty quiet. He's so chill. Other than that, I didn't like Chihuahuas until I met this dog, and I was like, "All right, that guy. Yeah, he's he's like, I don't like playing favorites, but he's my favorite for sure." I'm I'm so tempted to get another dog, but well, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. You know? Yeah, you know. Okay. You... He's so social. He loves yeah. he loves partying. <laughs> Trip sick. Yeah, no one one is good. Uh, good responsibility. For a young bachelor like yourself, so or wait, yeah, you're it's, it's you're in a relationship, right? No, that ended two, three months ago. Twelve weeks. How long is twelve Dang. weeks? Yeah, that was heavy. Well, That's, I'm sorry, dude. Happens. I'm the yeah. one who ended it, but it's still very painful. Yes. So that's that's no, where sure. this uh boost into the working out five times a week has come, and just burying myself and trying to you know. I, my, I transferred jobs or I like switched jobs to where I'm not working for, basically I'm working for this guy, Jamil first f- full time now. And I'm his like creative director and media manager and all this shit, like way more responsibility than I had at my last job. So that's keeping me busy. And then just kind of on the straight and narrow a little bit and then the working out shit and trying to film the motivation to film for mediocre, like goes in waves. And it's just like, I can't even, I don't even know how to explain it. Like the boys on Sunday, we filmed on Saturday. I bruised my heel trying a stupid little jib, just like a gap switch or a switch feeble bear. If you want to call it a gap, like three feet into a curb cut. And it moved, it's like something that should be so easy. And I bruised my heel on it. And then I was just like in a bad mood and everybody's like, let's get out the next day. And I'm grumpy because I was just in California weather. And now it's like 105 degrees. And I'm like, I just don't want to. And I just didn't, you know, and I, the guilt of like leave, leaving or letting down the whole crew because it's like up to me to like get out there and film for this shit but you can't beat yourself up you know that ride the wave and when it happens it happens yeah no i understand that i'm i've like even on like the last project that i had working with Haley or working with eddie, eddie yeah well like I, the reason why i said Haley is because i was thinking that Haley is the one that gets to deal with me when i like walk away from trying some shit you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I had multiple days where, like, I just physically, or no, not even physically, just more, like, mentally had to give up on stuff because, like, I was either going to hurt myself trying or physically I just couldn't go anymore, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I know, I know what you mean when it's, when uh, mine starts playing with you in that sort of way it's pretty yeah. rough and then sucks. i get there's because i don't know for me personally i prefer filming with just like the filmer i've always been that way because i'm like embarrassingly bad at filming so like i i just want it to be me and the filmer intimate thing where it's like okay look it's gonna take a while but i'll get it and then you know get the shit going but i'm in front of like the two best riders in arizona doing this little stupid stupid not even a clip like they did it first try not even filming and i was just like just embarrassing and i get in my head and all that shit yeah it is that's just you overthinking it yeah exactly exactly and i know that i'm putting i'm projecting but yeah yeah. see that's cool that you got that though because for me like i've had so many days where i go out solo with eddie and it's like I used to always be like, yeah, I want to be like small mission and stuff. But then when you go out and ride like just you and a filmer, it's kind of like weird energy sometimes. Not like it's weird because working with Eddie's the best and like he's awesome to hang out with all the time. And like, I feel like that's what like I can get my best stuff because 
the the vibes are just right when we ride together. But then again, it's like you see crews going out and it's like yeah, celebrations and yeah. shit. You know? Nothing it's beats like, like running and getting a hug after you land the trick. Yeah, know? like it's just different, different energy. Yeah. But I you seen uh chocolate truck two yet? No, I haven't. I was at BMX Day in San Diego and they were supposed to premiere it at this bar after the jam and I was there for two hours and it never came on, so we left. It's just the and, perfect example of just that. It's the vibes. It's the crew. Yeah, it's the, the people homies. in the city. Yeah, that it's like a documentary of like city people and life in a way on top of just being a BMX video. Um, all right, so before we watch your Etnies video and oh, kind of sure, go over there. it, I, I want to talk about like, so I just talked to Ben Norris a couple of weekends ago and in, in that video, like they showed footage of Lou winning at uh x games japan what was tell me about x games japan what was that all like you want like the full experience yeah give me some well it was very last minute i was supposed to be alternate i was alternate up until like the week before a week and a half before we left maybe two weeks something like that either way I was committed to going because in my head I had this thing where like if I don't attend I will never be invited back so I was like dude screw it like I'm just gonna go out to Japan I was like expecting to basically not even ride and just drop in on a full trip to do nothing pretty much but um yeah like two weeks before the event I was but known that someone backed out and I was in fully. So I was like, all right, shoot, like I got to buy my ticket and bought a plane ticket, booked the hotel room and everything. And everyone went through the same situation with visas, but pretty much like I didn't get a visa till three or four days before my flight took off. So the whole time after buying this flight i'm like am i even going to be able to get in the country like what is happening Shit, yeah it was it was super scattered but they sent us all the right information and we had to like download apps on our phone that was like a tracking app and stuff and basically like get off the plane and then they like make sure that you have this app and you have to sit and wait i waited like 30 45 minutes and then you go show them the app show them your paperwork and then they put you in another line wait another 30 45 minutes to spit in a tube to get a pcr test damn wait another 30 45 minutes for your results and then after that you go through another customs thing or immigration thing yeah you go through like some immigration thing then through get to get your bags and then go through customs and the whole experience is that, app, getting it. is that app like the social credit score shit that you hear about is that what that app is no i i don't know it's like it's called like my sos or something weird but yeah, yeah. It, it was super weird either way it took over four hours to get out of the airport after landing so like you couldn't even get into the country if you didn't have a smartphone pretty much yeah whoa if if you if you didn't have one you'd have to rent one from them no shit that's yeah. interesting um but i mean it's like most people have one nowadays so it's yeah easy but uh yeah apparently if you fail the the pcr test straight off the plane then they they take you and put you in like a government hotel near the airport you go there for seven days and then they retest you and if you fail you're in there for another full seven days until you pass but like if let's say if you like i was only staying there less than seven days so it, whoever if you fail and you're staying there less than seven days you have to rebook your whole trip home yeah Shit. like i i don't know how that works or like who i'm sure it's like airlines help you out rebooking but still like imagine being stuck somewhere and it's like a tiny hotel room that they put you in and they feed you like some fish and rice meal every day it's like yeah. one of the flatlanders from i think he's like french canadian like he got stuck in there like he was going crazy it looked like Man. jail cell he was like posting stories on his instagram it looked terrible but um 
yeah, so made it to the hotel that night and then they had like a box meal for us and then was like, you guys go sit in the room, like can't leave the room, don't talk to anyone, Let's just go to bed pretty much. And then every day you wake up, you take a antigen test, put the swab in your nose to go turn it in and then you're free to like go walk around. You can't even really walk around. You just go to the breakfast and then the lobby. That's pretty much the only places you could go to in the hotel. Like you couldn't go to, you couldn't go to the convenience store, like in the lobby. You had to like write down what you wanted on a sheet. It was crazy. Dude, how long and, ago uh, was this? This wasn't that long ago, right? April. Yeah, that's like man, mid and They were April. still like crazy lockdown like that. Yeah. And uh basically there was a shuttle that from certain hours like took you back and forth from the hotel to the venue. And those were like the only two places we could go. Shit. So I mean that doesn't sound like, like a fun vacation, but how was yeah. the contest? So it was like you would think, like it sounds awful, and like we all knew that going into it, but like it was pretty relaxed, like it wasn't it wasn't like too crazy, you know, like it, it felt pretty laid back for how gnarly it sounded. And yeah, it was, of course it was still like, we were still like on lockdown in a way, but it was, it was pretty chill. And you're with the was, homies. Yeah, exactly. But, um, so there was no riding street in Japan. No, not at all. No. Yeah. Uh, there was barely even riding the course. Like some people flew in like Monday, Tuesday, I was on a flight with like Brock and Garrett and our flight got delayed entirely until the next day. So we showed up like a day later than what our original plan was. And, uh, we were like, we, I don't know. I didn't know like anything for the schedule for practice, but the whole next day there was no even practice. Like the course basically didn't get done until Friday, the night before the contest no shit <laughs> and it was like we were supposed to have like a wednesday thursday friday practice kind of thing so they jammed in i think we had like one practice on friday and then one practice saturday morning and then a practice right before finals on saturday so it was like figure figure it out <laughs> figure it out <laughs> stupid <laughs> yeah exactly but honestly like the park dudes had it worse like i think their course was done at the same time they didn't get to ride till friday morning and i think i think each rider got eight drop-ins in the bowl and then had to try and qualify wow like it was it was pretty crazy for them so luckily we ride street and there was only eight competitors so it was just straight finals And <laughs> maybe like getting getting you have to I think in park it would be more valuable to be able to practice and get to know the transition because like I, street obviously you need to you need to as well but like the yeah. rails rails and ledges are rails and ledges you know yeah for what those dudes are doing of course like you need to know how like everything's gonna throw you and then know like how you're gonna get there and where you're gonna go after that and it's like there's definitely like more flow that needs to be figured out than going back and forth on a street course. Who's your favorite, just as an aside, who's your favorite park rider like that competed in the X Games in Japan? Like who's the crazy, who's the gnarliest one right now? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say my favorites, my two favorites. I probably have like three favorites. Um, I'm going to say Rim, Kevin, and Pat. Yeah. Solid. Those are my favorite. Yeah. I, I, I might be biased in a way because I just like them as homies and people, but I also really enjoy their riding. So, yeah, it's wild seeing Rim come from, you know, just like growing up before our eyes and now he's airing out 20 <laughs> feet above coping. You know? Yeah, I met Rim in like 2015, I think. Yeah, I was like, like when I was working at Sabrosa, I started hearing, I started seeing clips of him, and he was still just like learning and progressing. And then now he's a park goat. Yeah, I I rode some like G Shock contest, and I remember seeing him do like bar bar airs, and I was freaking out. Like this kid is tiny; he's on a twenty inch and just doing bar bars like nothing. Like, yeah, so it was sad. crazy. Does a part yeah, of you was... think that you could compete in a park contest still? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no. I, dude first of all i would be doing like tables and ground checks and 
suey's that's pretty much like all i want to do in yeah. a part contest and those and guys then, are doing uh, flip whips and flip uh, whip late bars i would need some like some super special judges to choose my tricks yeah for that, you know <laughs> <laughs> but like i don't know i i would hate to be put in that position because everything nowadays is so gnarly like i i just feel like i couldn't compete but i i did technically ride a part contest because chase hawk had that contest in uh houston last year and i like ended up getting third in that one somehow Boom. He still got it, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, <laughs> but there, there was like no box jump. It was all just like bowl transition stuff, that kind of thing, hits and things. So I just kind of like floated around, did some tech stuff, did some tables, some crank arms. That's dope. Made it. Yeah, it was fun. What was it like after the? Con- well, I mean, there's we we could take it step by step. Like, how is this? We were just talking at the beginning about being nervous in front of crowds. Were was there a big crowd due to? covid lockdown shit or what was it like in the actual street arena it was what kind of building was it like so it was like a it was a massive not not like a dome it was a it was a big stadium kind of set up you know and they had everything in the stadium they had the vert ramp like the flat area for the flatland dudes uh the moto x best whip was right in the center and then the street and park course were like almost okay, yeah, opposite ends. I can picture it, but it, it. it was a massive open stadium, so like it was a good size, so- good size. Big crowd like, is like is BMX and all this shit big in Japan? I don't. I'm, oh yeah, I'm not oh, cultured. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I I feel like they I feel like Japan just appreciates everything. You know, like yeah. they just seem to love the fact that all of this was even brought to their area it seems like you know yeah and i think in their culture like kendama comes from their co- their culture right i think so i, I don't totally. i don't know for sure I'd i imagine think Je- the japanese just appreciate like a discipline and you know like dedicating yourself to something to get into be the best at it or whatever i could see that that makes yeah. sense of why they're like dominating and like skateboarding and stuff now yeah. it's like i know that it's like olympic sport they <laughs> they see it as something that they can like like you're saying like dedicate themselves to yeah you're gonna learn piano and violin and skateboarding <laughs> yeah but i mean as much as they're like serious about it like that like they just also seem very enthusiastic about everything like That's dope. i feel i don't know i feel like they're there's like a little bit more energy in a stadium in japan than there is at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Like, I don't know. I I feel like they, people in America see so much crazy talent so frequently that a lot of stuff just like goes over people's heads. Sometimes, like, there's like a different level of uh, like gratefulness for what they're seeing and appreciation. I guess you know. Yeah, that's real. So, what's going through your head when you are? figuring out what your 45 second run is going to be how the hell do you start um like practice day one type thing or well i mean i've never competed in the x games but i imagine you like kind of have a and from what i've seen you pick your tricks basically and you're like if i I get through this and then i'm going to go over here and i'm going to do this and then some people switch it up in between runs but like for the most part you're kind of trying to just perfect one line and yeah some people some people have like different approaches to it like chad's crazy to me because he just improvises and he'll like try a different run each go but the 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 format is three runs best run count so in my head i'm like i'm gonna do the run i want to do and then if i get it try to better it and if I don't get it, try to do the same run over and over, you know? Yeah, that makes and, sense. Uh, but, sorry. You're good. Um, but for me, like, I'll just ride practice and 
I don't know. First day is always kind of like our first time touching the course is always just like mess around, see how things feel, see how things line up. Like I just play around. It's like this session with friends at that point. And uh, if I can like start putting certain obstacles together, then I find myself like a beginning, middle and end at that point. And I always have my run like down to the science of how it's going to work out or like alternate routes if certain things don't work out and like like if I land weird and messes with the flow of something like have something else I can do from that point or I don't know this comes with like overthinking stuff I contingency think contingency you know? plans and if I land and swerve to the right after this I'll end up doing this type shit I see what you're saying Pretty much, yeah but what about like trick difficulty do you start off with a really hard one and then get that out of the way and get momentum or do you build your way up to the more difficult tricks uh i i think it kind of depends because like for japan like i started out with some manual line and i i don't think i landed it every run i think i messed up on my second run but it's obviously something that like i can do comfortably but i don't know if i can do it every single time so there is somewhat of like a risk in there so starting out with some sort of manual line, I feel like paid off for that situation. But at the same time, for the recent X Games, like the, the course layout, I didn't have like a good, I don't know. I didn't have a good idea in my head of like how to start out necessarily. So I kind of last minute right before finals, like changed everything about like the whole run I had planned. And I'm glad I did, but like I was not confident at all going into that at all. So the way I started out and at the recent one, it was something that was more comfortable than doing like a risky manual line. So it, it's kind of different, like starting out. I don't know. It can work either way, but I always try to have something somewhat techy, somewhat kind of. I don't know. I try to find the fine line of like safe. Yeah. And, but also risky, just that little balance in between. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't I know. You got to rewatch then, your runs from that one. Something, uh, something <laughs> at the end, some sort of like fakie combo. Cause I feel like it's hard to do a fakie trick or backwards manual and have like momentum after that to like keep going it's it's very rare for like a course layout to have something yeah like and how about the timer so like if you're just riding backwards that you're still doing a trick technically you're in the middle of a trick if you're going fakie so like if timer runs out how does it are they super strict on like if you I go, if you go 45 never, seconds over i've never asked about this because i I remember like in Sydney, I ended with some manual line, but I almost feel like it didn't count. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> they just I, cut it off mid manual. Yeah. But, you know, I honestly don't know. I, I assume it's like, I assume it, it doesn't count, but in our head, it's like part of a combo, but it's like a dead part of a trick. So it's like, oh, he didn't get to squeeze that in there. That's unfortunate, you know, but yeah. I don't know. I'm not too sure how that works, but who's your favorite BMX announcer? Um, Catfish. <laughs> yes, facts. But, um, I feel like Scotty does a good job as well. Yeah, he's amazing too. Yeah, he does a really good job. But Man, what um, a story, Scotty! Carroll, Carroll now as well, you know. Yep, I'd say those are definitely top three. Yeah. Yeah, Daryl, Daryl, and Catfish are the goats for me. I feel like they they make riding very exciting, or yeah. watching riding. They exciting. both bring their own energy. Yeah, Daryl exactly. can just light up a whole stadium. It's crazy. So, what yeah. about after Lewis won? How did how was the partying? Did you guys get the party <laughs> in Japan? <laughs> kind of. Like by the athlete lounge, there was like a little open bar, and it was a. Uh, well, you could drink Budweiser until 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so that turned into like me and Lou just like holding as many bottles as we can in our fingers. Like, yeah, just give me four. Like, <laughs> 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 and uh, then it, 
all got taken back to the hotel. And then next thing you know, we're like in the stairwell of the ho- of the hotel, just like kicking it, blasting the speaker, drinking and stuff. Fuck yeah. Chilling and, with the uh, boys in Japan. Yeah, it was cool. You had like moto dudes, like Axel and skate dudes in there. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty interesting scene going on, but I was celebrating heavy that night. So You were in Japan, you were bronze? I, I finished silver there, yeah. So Lewis Gold, you silver, Garrett bronze? Is that what it was? That's what it was. That's a fucking podium, dude. Yeah, it was pretty wild. What's the prize? Yeah, especially, what's the prize like, for silver? Um, or the purse? I think that's public shit, right? I'm not trying to air out your financials. Honestly, I don't know. Like, I didn't even know what it was until last minute. But I think uh, silver was 15. Fuck yeah! Congrats. Which is pretty pretty yeah. beast. Not too bad. But then, like, that one's weird because then it gets taxed straight out of Japan. So I think it was like. 20% tax before it hits my bank account. <laughs> yeah. And then you but, bring it home, then you have to pay taxes home or at at home? How does that work? I, I think I wait until uh it's just part of your regular income. I think I just wait until the 1099 or W2 or whatever it is comes through, you know. Yeah. That's a See piece I'm curious is. about real quick is like for your sponsors, you're an independent contractor. So yes. you're 1099 and no W2 income. Yes. Right? That's a headache. I had to learn the hard way about saving money to pay for taxes on the 1099s. Do you have like an accountant? But, but Devin Smiley is an employee of oh. Devin Smiley BMX. Yes. Sick. Yeah. And then <laughs> that, that means you're taxed as an S corp and you get to save cause you're paying, you're paying, what's it called? What's it called? Payroll taxes. Do you use like exactly. a- ADP and you cut yourself a check from the Yeah, yeah. Account? I think it's yeah. like e- EDP or some shit like that is what we use. Yeah, dope. But, I uh, had to learn that the hard way going into like business, just figuring dude, that shit out. I, I like, I swear I wasn't even making that money. And like I paid 13 grand like first time when I was like 22, 23. And I was like, holy crap. Like, dude, it hit me so hard. That's real. And then, I think, I don't know. I think it was like the next year I paid like 10 or something. And so I paid, I paid like close to over 20 grand in taxes from like one tax period to another. So that's pretty much like a year right there. Yeah. 20 grand gone, like everything I had in savings gone. And I was Phew. like, I got to change something. Like how, how, how is anyone supposed to live like this? Is it crazy? Yeah. That's it's so hard <laughs> yeah but at the so same hard. time like i've had people tell me like like you need to make a certain amount for an s corp to be worth it kind of thing and blah 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 but it's like like yeah i pay an accountant to like help me out but at the same time like i don't really get shafted at the end of the year like yeah, i that's used huge. to so the accountant is the best move ever yeah and i I have everything like I have like a a business card too. So I pretty much like know what is business expense in a way. And it's a lot easier to kind of like decide what's a business expense and then know how much I'm spending and then go through statements and go through and do expenses at the end of the year like that. So it's a, a lot more organized than like trying to save receipts and stuff all the time, you know? Like, and so uh, what, I mean, are you down? What What are your sources of income? Like, you have fly and etnies, and then is there anything else going on? That's pretty much it. What a what like, a because I know we've talked about it while we were shredding people in Fortnite, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what other sources of income could a pro BMX rider make? You know. Uh, Besides, like, so there's contests. There's your sponsors, and then. What else could you do? Um, some people I know do like commercial work and stuff like that. And that stuff's usually pretty good. Like you can get good deals doing that. But um, I think that kind of takes an agent to kind of help you with that stuff. And uh, I've been kind of uh, 
blindsided by an agent recently. And I guess that's like the way you can say it, but I don't know. I just had like some bad, bad experience recently. So I'm like back to independently doing everything. So good for um, you. It's for the better. I know yeah. that. <laughs> what does an agent even do? You know, they're just sending emails to like get you a gig, whatever you can pretty do. Much. That. They blow smoke up your ass. That's pretty much it. Yeah, they're like, you're going to take over the world, bro. Just give me yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're going to be making this much a month. I could do that for you. Like, it should be nothing. But, uh, that, yeah, pretty much. You already know. Yeah. You Have you gotten into, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> low-key, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I'll be your video game agent. Let's get you on Twitch. <laughs> Get you streaming, you get go. some get some affiliate partnerships going. Because that's, that's your thing I actually want to do. I don't know why, but I well, could be into it. You have a social media following, and what we talked about earlier with like treating yourself as a pro athlete, like you are a legit pro influencer on Instagram, and to like not capitalize that, capitalize on that because you think it's cringe is like you know a battle in itself. But like if you're if there's a product you believe in, and then you can put out an ad on your social media and get a percentage of whatever the sales come in from like using code smiley type shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure shit like that has come up, but. I and I, that's a oh my gosh yeah so Haley like follows this one girl that's like a, uh she's like a a mom influencer or whatever mm-hmm. and she pretty much like posted her rates for what she gets paid to post a product on her reels and stuff and I was like shocked to see her numbers that's on what wild. she charges yeah. and like compared to like her following and everything i was like dude like like there is no way that i couldn't be asking for these type of numbers but i just like i don't think i didn't think i was worth that much when i had multiple companies hit me up in the past so like i feel like i've missed out on so many opportunities so i was sitting there like going through direct messages and stuff trying to find all this old like past companies that hit me up and feel like it's like too late but <laughs> I, I like i wouldn't mind getting on that and i'm sure like people wouldn't be down to see me like trying to sell product but if it's something i believe in like you're saying like yeah facts i feel like it'd be easy to sell or or at least try to or post something you know i just saw you did an interview with this place this thing called green talk the cbd company what the <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was a while ago yeah it was maybe a year ago and that was something my agent got me at the ah. time yeah, it was stupid. I got like yeah. free CBD product out of it. We don't like it. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. He's fired. All right, let's get into this Edney's video, dude. Oh, yeah, you're talking about that. <laughs> let's, let's break it down. Break it down. This is it, right? Yep. All right. Here we go. This is crazy, dude. It's a little choppy for me, but oh my god! Yeah. All right, let's start off with you eating shit right there, dude. I think it'll. There's no g- getting around. It's gonna be choppy for you, but oh, is it smooth for you? Yeah, it's smooth for me, but oof! Oh, look at that! Yeah. So, um, taking my shirt off before that was like not the greatest <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> like the try before, <laughs> dude. No, nah, so. This was like right before I figured out how to do nose manuals and I was just like, this was super random. We were just riding to school and I was like doing hangers and I was like, dude, I'm, I think I could hanger drop noses. Like I've never done that trick before, but I started trying it and it started clicking. And uh, I definitely did that same thing like three times where I tried to hop over the bars and just clip my toes. That's the worst. Just yeah, that. So this was just one of those bodied. times that yeah, happened. It was a scorpion chest slide. Dude. Yeah, my wrists were cooked after that for a little bit. All right. So first of all, how long were you guys working on this? Look at you, long hair, Devin. You guys have been saving footage for a while, no? That was that was like mid length. I couldn't even put my hair up at that point. Yeah. Um, shoot, I think. Uh, july or august of last year probably nice. yeah around the same time i started going to the gym it's <laughs> a good amount of time yeah so it, it was eight months total because i remember like the point that we finished it it was eight months because i think we finished in like 
I think we finished one of the last clips we filmed was in March. Boom. And then the video was done before April, I'm pretty sure. But we had issues with songs and stuff. So pretty much the timeline sat until a week ago. Yeah, and, dude. I was just talking to Vish last week and I didn't talk about this because I saw yeah. in the credits like Vish music scored music by Vish. Did Vish create the original soundtrack for the whole thing? Uh, yeah. So I, I, Eddie and I pretty much, we, we had no idea what we were doing. We just like filmed the video because he wanted to help me out. And I was just like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not doing anything if I'm not being productive. So I just like, I like going writing and filming. Like I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so we pretty much just filmed with like no one, no idea of where this video is going to go. Like it had no home. So we pretty much just like edited it and made it how we wanted to to a different song originally and um uh, sent it to pova and was like yo do you want to like use this for etnies or something and he was like oh sick what, what the heck yeah sure that'd be awesome turns out that they needed to use a cleared song for their youtube account mm -hmm. and uh that turned into and like i spent like eddie and i spent like a over a month trying to figure out a song that worked and like at that point i was like over it you know so when they told me that we needed to figure out another song i was like stressed out i pretty much gave up at a certain point so i was like i don't i don't know what to do like so frustrating yeah so what was the original song it was like some band called kvb and it was like this song called always then that I know exactly. Cool. I know it's an amazing song. And it's a like it's German like rock. I think so. Yeah, some yeah. kind of like dark wave. I don't yeah, know I love that is. shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know and I think I know exactly what that's so bomb. I'm going to watch it with that song playing over it. <laughs> All right, let's get back um, to it. But yeah. Beach is the man. What a talented motherfucker. Yeah. So like I told Eddie not to show anyone and he showed Beach and then Beach was like, "Oh, I hope you make music." And I was like, "Dude, that's dope." That is like, dope. Like, so like let's let's just do that and so sure did enough, that worked out was it you did you send him the timeline and then he scored it or did like you have to edit around visha's music you know what i mean like you guys edited um, it to the song that you chose but then you had to redo it did you like move shit around when so put the music i think eddie eddie originally showed vish on a trip and then vish offered that he could make the music so vish sent the timeline and he pretty much i sent vish three songs that i liked and he basically like made similar sound music to it you know cool. and yeah. then uh kind of made everything like based around the timeline in a way so that works it all, and it, yeah it, it fits my writing very well i, I like how it came out and, and, Eddie and i both are like super happy with it the vibe changes you know three three times you know yeah All right. opening with a skate clip <laughs> yeah, i don't awesome. even understand is that a hard one that's that's sick uh, i don't understand I don't <laughs> but then they're right on the same ledges that's pretty sick yeah that, this clip was originally in the like middle of the video but we started out with it because it made sense with the skate clip because yeah he wanted to put the skate clip in the front in the first part and i was like I was like kind of against it because I wasn't too hyped on it, but it, it worked out. <laughs> I agree. Like the most important clips are the first and the last one, you know? And yeah. so that's what I wanted this clip to be the first one. All right. Let's see what you got here. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a pretty damn good opening clip. How long did that take? Uh, I would say. Uh maybe like an hour i don't know not not that long like not as long as some of the other battles i had how which one can you it was do it very both random ways? can you do uh, ice predator both ways yes i like to do switch to regular i feel like i'm more consistent landing in a regular over ice nice but i couldn't do or i mean i'm not gonna say i couldn't but regular to over switch hard would be like way more difficult for me oh yeah but maybe easy could be easier whatever yeah I, I definitely know i could do that all right and this i remember when i was 
like in my prime, my dream trick was, was to be able to 180 into a backwards manual and then keep it going straight. And I, I determined after months of trying that it was physically impossible. And here you are. <laughs> I don't understand, dude. You guys all make it look so easy. A, a lot of these clicks are just super random. Like, I don't know what made me like put that together as a little setup, but yeah. it worked out. And sure. That did. was actually, that was the first clip that Eddie and I filmed together for this project. This one right here? Yeah. This nice. is the clip that was like, well, I guess you want to like make a video or something. <laughs> <laughs> what a clip. Yeah, what are you cooking, Haley? Smells good. I don't fucking know. I literally have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> good. I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> it smells awesome. What do we got? Garrett, Garrett and Lou on the session? Some Beautiful. Goats, yeah. Goat, I love this clip. I was hyped on this one, too. Was that scary? Probably scary. That was scary. probably one of the more scary clips in yeah. this timeline, for sure. I, I wanted the, to do yeah. it better, but after I did that one, I was like, dude, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the pole jam, right? Yeah. yeah. This was fire. I, I love that, that he ramped too. the, uh, and we got Trevi Siglock, dude. Star studded cast in the background. <laughs> dude, this trick. Uh, I, was, hey, well, I was just in Venice, and Nick Crower and Dan, and maybe not Dan so much, but uh, Mike Stahl, they were all geeking on like, how the fuck does Devin do this? It makes it look so easy. One, one, <laughs> 180 over opposite. And they were all trying on this flat rail. And like, I think, I think Nick got into it once and landed fake. Oh, I could see Nick doing it. Nick's yeah. like good at odd grinds like that. I feel like yeah. so swaggy too. I, I, I'll be honest. I'm not like a huge fan of this clip in particular. I, I, I like the spot but I feel like I should have done something out because I did at this, an Indian. I yeah, but <laughs> I, I went with intentions of like doing some bar maneuver out, but I just like, I don't know. I, I If for just being like a plain 180 over pegs, I feel like I should do it. I want to do it down like a real rail, you know? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, well, there's a goal for I the guess, future. Like, the setup of it, worked out for being back to back. I wanted these two clips to be like back to back for sure. Yeah, made sense. This one this one took hours. I couldn't tell you how long it took. Which part? God dude. Just getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> Half cab and the over opposite double peg is so crazy. Like locking into that was like the hardest part of it all. For I believe sure. it. So you would I like ABD. get into it? Yeah, I heard Brock did it to regular, right? Yeah. yeah, Brock did it to straight, but I found out We're all after, and then in my head, I was like, I won down him, but also used the spot differently. So like I've Eddie and Eddie was like, yeah, I talked to multiple people and they were like, I think it's safe to use. Yeah. And, and I was dude, like, we're all friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I told Brock, I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if that was in my head, but I'm pretty sure I said something. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure I won downed you, but I'm pretty sure Brock good. would be there cheering you on. He's a sweetheart, dude. Yeah, true. This was sick. This creative, Another, dude. This is a, a lot of these clips are just like off the top of the head at the spot. Like I, I don't, I don't operate like going to the spot with a trick in mind there was literally two actually i don't know i think there was maybe like three or four or five clip handful of clips that were like planned out in this but everything else is kind of like just freestyling kind of thing and this was one of them and it was seemed super random for something to do at this spot and for me to do it and i don't know ended up actually taking a really long time but i'm happy with it it was kind of cool yeah, I mean, it's a, like, played out, not played out, but a really blown out spot, and you just did something that, like, nobody else would have thought of to do on it, you know? Yeah. It was fire. I was hyped on the, the usage of that spot. Yeah. yeah. You use both ledges and, you know, add a little sauce to it. I was so hyped yeah. to see this clip of Eddie filming. <laughs> the little just B -roll look clip. at him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> So there's a whole bunch of like B-roll and second angles that are 
filmed on what is it a dad cam dude i i don't know what it is it's like this tiny little freaking it. dude it's I think, <laughs> it's so it, bad it, yeah it's so bad but it works so yeah, perfectly it's a vibe. for these little shots yeah i love it the focus face on eddie dude i love it yeah i almost was like dude we need to shoot more stuff with that like camera yeah uh, I'm like into all the B-roll mm. shots that he got, but always I love it. I love your full calves. You don't rely on pedal pressure. You just pop it, and that's that's so difficult. And then to do a five cab that way is also just like pure muscle. And then uh, now yeah. there's there's these kids doing seven twenty cabs. Have you ever done a seven twenty cab? No, but I watched Felix do one right in front of me at X Games, and it was like. <laughs> absurd to it's watch so crazy dude he was like oh yeah you just do it like a five cab but just like keep the bars <laughs> in your lap and just keep spinning and i was like yeah 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 no shit <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, I, I don't really know how that works but maybe one day I, i'll you know felix is up I'm there sure. right now, i'll try man. it top dude, of the yeah, game he, he is i would say he's like when it comes to like trick selection and stuff like he's the best right now in my yeah. head at least he's he's up there mm. so in the come up podcast they asked you what's your what's the scariest trick and you said barring into a grind on a rail is like the most adrenaline filling trick was this a scary one for you to do or safe um it's fairly safe but i went with intentions of doing another trick there but i kind of like got scared so i just stuck with this what um, was the other trick i don't really want to say because i feel like it's stupid to say <laughs> call some shit out that i didn't do but well, either way um i just like bar pegs it a few times and that wasn't too bad because it's like it's not like it's like a scary rail like when when i said that in that interview i was thinking of like a 20 star yeah yeah like an <laughs> yeah. fl- like old fly video and it was like i don't know like i haven't barred into like a big rail since like my etnies part and that was like five years ago so yeah just okay like barring barring into any rail is like kind of scary but nowhere near as terrifying as a big down rail for sure you know yeah and i was just scott marceau gave me a tip on crooked grinds when we were riding the flat rail in long beach he's like do you get your back peg on first and then set down the front peg because i was just kind of hopping into it almost front peg yeah, first I, it likes to kind of like kind of like kick you all sideways if you land two pegs but honestly it's like two pegs is more proper but like if you're barring into something it's so much easier to like oh yeah back peg so i mean i I try not to, and it's. I see it a lot when I see this one clip. I'm like, I wish I could have done that better. I I, I say, I, oh yeah, like I agree. Like I I know how it feels when it when I bar spin into stuff, but I've but done no, it. Yeah, it, you see <laughs> yeah. it and you can like visualize it. It makes sense, you know. Yeah. Like you understand how bikes work. Yeah, I can feel but, like it's weird when you watch BMX videos. You can like feel your muscles doing the things. You know what I mean? Like I can feel. Yeah. I can at least use my imagination. <laughs> This was a Justin Benthian clip. Okay, I see what you're saying. This one, very Quite random. Nice. <laughs> Just hyped on the spot usage on that one. Yeah. It, that was actually really hard because it was like super quick to do like the. Yeah, pop up, like, you bump have no jump time. Then, yeah, it was, and then to like wally that and then to aim for the ledge that was past the distance of the wall, it was kind of, it was really yeah, weird. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. And it, it never does it justice in video. Like if we went here oh, no. and then showed somebody like, here's what Devin did, it would be like, what? <laughs> exactly. This is another super random, just out of nowhere. I'm telling you, most of this stuff is just like very random. But I, li- I like it when shit just like works. Yeah. I liked, I thought this was an interesting clip. Like wall ride, nose bonk, bar. I liked it. Yeah, Eddie took me to that spot. And this I looks was, like a bent I was clip. like, uh, this one, this one and the Ice 180 were filmed by Andrew Knight. Elevated perspective. Yes, sir. All right. 
What are they, black beans? Yeah. I think so, yeah. You rinse black beans, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you rinse black beans. Yes, you rinse black beans. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty heavy, dude. That's a long ass switch ice. Yeah, I was hyped on that one. What's your what's your opinion on calling it switch versus opposite? Oh hi, Eric. Yeah, Eric L. Rikini. Who was there? I think it was like it was Martinez, Eric L. Rikini, and uh Dak. So Squad. to get this one with the with the boys there, you know, I was hyped on that. Yeah. Um, but uh honestly, I don't even know, dude. I I've been trying to call stuff opposite more, but I like to say switch, but yeah, then switch. people are like, Oh, it's not switch, it's opposite. And now it's like <laughs> There's so much switch footed stuff that now it's like, well, switch is your foot stance and then opposite is the trick. So it's like switch oppo. Yeah. It's like, I don't even know anymore. Like, shut up, like, dorks. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you mean. Switch has one syllable and opposite has three. So switch it is. Yeah. I'm just going to start saying op. <laughs> op ice. I got ops. <laughs> That's technical as shit, dude. I, I love this clip. But at the same time, like we went to that school because it's got like the, the ledge rails inside and I went with intentions to ride the, the ledge rails, but we got stuck riding the bank to sub and we never <laughs> even had to ride the real spot. <laughs> That's just how she goes, man. Yeah. All right. Here's the one we were talking about at the beginning. Crank flip out. Boom, dude. Got to have a crank flip in the part, you know. Uh, do you think Simone was the first to do a nose manual to crank flip? I would say yes. This, I I think I don't know if I filmed his first one ever, but I filmed one of him like in 2014 or 15 or 13 or I don't even remember. But it's yeah, that's a crazy. That's... It's like he unlocked it for the world. Oh yeah, for real. Oh him. I mean, I'm not gonna say he unlocked crank flips, but I feel like he was one of the people that like made them cool again for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Like there's people maybe in the olden days, back before my time, where you ride brakes. Maybe there's people doing like endos and then crank flipping in. I'm sure it was done before. Oh, I, I don't. You know, I don't but... mean like nose manual crank flips. I just meant crank flips in general. I've never oh, yeah. seen a nose crank flip before him, for sure. I I haven't watched enough like old school BMX videos, but I would bet that somebody had done it. Anyway. Yeah, I'm sure everything's been done. Oh, that's money. <laughs> so this was my like this was my like you can teach an old dog new tricks trick because I, yes. I that that was my first peg switch whip i'd ever done no shit yeah i'd never done one like at a park or anything just oh. like randomly started hitting that up rail and i was like dude like i have so much time i'm, I'm like i want to film this <laughs> so it's Hell like yeah. it's kind of funny because it's in my head i'm like I didn't want this towards the end of the part just because I feel like I can list 10 people that could do this trick first try. Yeah. But for it's me, special it's to like, you, bro. yeah, it was, it, it meant a lot to me, you know, I was yeah. like, I turned 30 this year and did my first peg switch with it. Like one could say that you had a lot of pride in that trick and there's pride in the background there, dude. <laughs> I had the eye of the tiger as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Any serious injuries while filming this shit? Uh, not that I can think of. I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was very fortunate. And that goes with working out as well. You know, you work out to strengthen everything around yep. our bones and our ligaments. So, you know, it prevents injuries a lot better. And you can learn how um, to fall good and be flexible. Yeah. yeah, but that's part of being pro is like learning how to fall good. You're pro at, getting out of bad situations you have like to half be. of the battle that's but, why i'll never be pro dude i'm not willing to eat shit <laughs> I'm, try, <laughs> I'm trying to finish this one video part and i know i have to eat shit a bunch yeah, but well yeah you have to eat shit to yeah. know how to avoid that mistake you yeah. know all right golly <laughs> let's fucking go <laughs> classic jacob the homie homie jacob this was fucking awesome yeah so this clip was one that like i drove to san diego for 
and like Eddie, <laughs> Eddie and I like made the mission for it. And I like, I wanted to do that trick down like a double kink rail and like that one's nice and mellow and safe, but I actually probably one of the worst things that happened was on this rail. I like got into the, the opposite ice and kind of like front end dropped and I, uh, it was, I don't know. I don't even know what happened, but the back of the seat like went into my calf super bad and it was like three weeks. I could barely move my leg. That was that probably, like, one of the worst things. But I so like you, shit you can, like that where your bike hurts you, dude, you can, you can see like how I'm like moving after I land it, but it turned into like every single try where I hopped off of the rail and landed on my feet. I was like in so much pain. It was awful. I was, had to work I was for so it. bummed. Yeah. I I fought for this one for sure. So to Boom. get, to get past the fear of like hopping into the over ice and then like to work through the pain altogether, that was, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's that crazy of a trick, but it was like, dude, like for like a lot could go wrong. I felt like in my head, you know, yeah, I was trying to just, I'm not sure I've seen that. that trick before. If anybody, I would guess Eric Elstrin maybe figured that out at some point, but I don't know, dude. That's, do you think it's, I don't know. I haven't seen that shit before. Yeah, I don't know. I I filmed one like at a skate park for like a USL video like end of last year, I think. Yeah. But on a real rail, I don't know. It's pretty dope. So, yeah, that was funky. Congrats, player. <laughs> <laughs> he is surprised and stoked, dude. Oh yeah, that's pain. That was the yeah, hobble over pain hobbling. victory. And then this, so this oh. set up, this is one of those spots that like I had never been to and I saw uh, like a photo of it or clip of it. And I was like, dude, this, I wonder if this trick would be possible. And it turns out it was dude. Yeah. Three hours later, it, it's possible. <laughs> God, dude, and you could tell you're surprised. You're like, what the yeah. fuck? Oh my god! But Eddie took out the audio. I was like, no fucking way, no fucking <laughs> way. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no fucking way. Yeah, I was freaking out. So I did it. I landed it, and uh, I did like the front crank out, and my front peg hit so hard, and I was all like that it like is that it and then i saw the clip and i was like no i gotta keep doing it and i I, like i i think my i can't tell but it almost seems like my peg hits on the one i took but it's like it didn't feel like it and it didn't it was something no way after i don't know yeah but yeah i'm talk about a technical maneuver dude you know what fucked me up when they posted like when I first watched it, it looks like this camera is such shit that it looks like it's a different day with a different outfit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but this, this, the way the sun was on it, you yeah. could tell that was like hours into trying. That's yeah, true, like, huh? That's or, what it was. So that's, yeah, it was yeah. like, it was probably right when we got there. That was a full day session. Yeah. Did a good job. I'm pretty sure awesome. I was on that for three hours straight, just like over and over and over, like no breaks. That's how you do it shit good job thank you sir smash hit 10 out of 10 rotten tomatoes 100 <laughs> percent. i still kind of and, can't believe that one worked i was like yeah i was on cloud nine after doing that <laughs> and this is apparently eddie's full or first full project that he did on his own so i'm proud of, proud of the lad gotta talk yeah to him. that's true because the the last one that we did together was like half gordon footage i'm excited he, to talk to him he filmed my uh he filmed a lot of my last like fly video that we did but he edited the whole thing and then like gordon and i had a timeline then we didn't ride together for like over six seven months or something like that and then Eddie and I started writing together and filming. So it was like, yo, can we just like get this timeline and Eddie and I are just going to finish it. So Gordon was cool enough to 
send it our way and let us just like do our thing with it. All right. Looks like it's dinner time. Oh my gosh. What you got there? I don't even know, man. There's three tacos. It is Tuesday, so. Taco Tuesday. Haley's vegetarian, so we're Respect. veggie in the household. Respect. I I need my protein. I'll be eating meat and stuff. Me too. I dated Haley a vegetarian, you know? I respect it. <laughs> but yeah, this looks really bomb, so. There's nothing on it, like sauce-wise. Oh, I have taco sauce. Don't worry. It all right, work. here's one. Um, all right, so rapid fire to wrap it up. Um, yeah. What makes a good BMX video? Um, filming, uh, music, um, trick selection, spot selection. Yep. Fire. Okay. What music are you listening to this morning? What music are you on right now? Uh, I'm actually at the point where I am so fried of music. <laughs> <laughs> like I, 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 Obviously, I love listening to rap music and stuff, but it's like there's so much content out there to sort through that it's like kind of difficult to even find stuff I like anymore. I don't know. It was so good. trippy listening to that 2015 podcast where you guys are talking about Xavier Wolf and Hollow Bones and all that shit. And it's just like <laughs> the the amount of trajectory that they've had since then is, and even Adam's trajectory since then is so wild. Dude, anyway. it's, yeah, it's crazy. What about been, podcasts? I, actually, I listen to these like, uh, playlist that it's like the skate brand brown 56k they make like little yes. radio playlists and i just Sick. like listen to those and it's literally like a mix of all types of music and it's all good music so it makes my I'm life gonna, a lot easier i need to start doing that that's fire soundcloud dude they got a bunch of them on there it's fire you like it i do love that podcast um i don't i don't really listen to podcasts too much honestly i'm like I, i've got short attention span unless i'm like on a long drive yeah definitely like, it's a good way to kill time on a drive yeah some people might not be like hugest fan but there's probably a lot that are like super fans but i'll listen to like joe rogan and Fuck like yeah listen to like dudes talk about her like navy seals and stuff talk about their experiences that kind of stuff or i listen to like true crime with Haley. nice until i get over it and can't stand it anymore of course well <laughs> she's a woman so she likes true crime you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's your favorite filmer Mm. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Uh, That's a fine probably, answer. We can move on. Probably Tony Ennis and Ben Norris. <laughs> That's a fire combo. Boom. That's it. Yeah. And Bobby Cano. Hey, and Rich Form. <laughs> yeah, Rich Form's fucking Vish. Who's? I'm trying. Yeah, Vish, Vish is, Dakota Vish Roche. Kills it. Dakota Roche is my favorite filmer. Because nobody knows. Actually, people know. Dude, people know that Dakota can film. Um, yeah, no, all right. he, he's got the eye. Your favorite spot to ride in the entire world? That's not an easy one. <laughs> I feel like I should have an answer for this. I don't know. I feel like something that has a, a nice flat bar. A manual pad and a ledge. Where, what spot is that? Somewhere in Barcelona? Probably. Barcelona, just know. the city alone is so yeah. fucking sick. I, uh, I haven't even like scratched the surface of Barcelona. I feel like last time I was there, I was like still seeing stuff I've never seen in videos. Like it's crazy. Right? Yeah. I, I was there for 10 days and just I, I barely touched the touristy spots, you know, and it's still yeah, incredible. Right. You take the train out, like, just up a little bit, like, you'll see some crazy stuff, too. Yeah, exactly. I've always wanted to go to the one that was in Dan Cox in Voices. Does, or, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Dan Cox. It's just, like, a weird mani pad thing. It's black marble, and then at the end of it, so, like, it's mostly flat, and then it, it like, goes up, and then a steep bank down. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, you've probably, def, probably like seen some it. ledge thing or some sh- something yeah. like that. I've always yeah. wanted to go there. That would be cool. Uh, favorite? I mean, who who's your favorite rider right now? Mm. Mm. I don't know, dude. That's actually a really tough one. I feel like 
Blue's been killing it. I like I like seeing the stuff that Felix is coming out with. Yeah. But I also will forever love timeless writing like Simone's. I feel like I feel I say that I I feel like I say Simone is my favorite writer like every anytime someone asks me. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. It's just to say, dude, too. I'm like I I'm like I kind of appreciate everyone's writing, you know? I feel like everyone's got something different to offer. Yeah. And uh I'm seeing new kids I've never heard of or people that I feel like I might have like overlooked their writing and seeing them doing stuff that like I appreciate a lot more now and it's like I don't know, maybe it's like the way I see BMX is changing or I just have like a greater appreciation for it overall now. So who's who's a writer that I don't know about that I should know about? Mm. Um there's these two Argentinian kids. Juan Batista and Ian Alesso. Oh, you already know those. A fucking like, legend. Like everyone there, already knows yeah. these kids now. Yeah. I think that's their names, Juan, Juan Batista. They're Dude, I don't just like they're riding pronounce. flat ground and curbs and then like yeah. one one spot that's like over bar bar height and doing Yeah. Those <laughs> kids are on it though. Like they're they're so cool. They, they really seem, are. They seem like really cool kids and they're both so freaking good. So it's crazy to see. Like I just hope that even with like how difficult it is to like get somewhere with B of X for them and their location. Like I just hope that they continue to like progress and stay into it you know so yeah we'll see how that goes that was one thing that i thought about before we started is talking about your mindset and how to like because i didn't have that i got sponsored and then i kind of treated it like the finish line and you're constantly you you talk you like want to want to keep progressing and it's like i is that is that a taught thing a learned thing is it just like built in you know but it uh, um i think it kind of just happens with experience um because i feel like there was multiple points when i was younger like oh i made it kind of thing but yeah when i look back on it now and i'm like i didn't i wasn't shit you know yeah and like i still don't think i'm shit but yeah. i like i i don't know i just i don't even know where i like want to take it <laughs> like, i don't <laughs> know what i want from it i just want to like do my best that's where i'm at now so it's like seeing what i've been able to accomplish the past year alone even just like motivates me to keep pushing to get better and you know ride more and like that it just makes me enjoy riding more too so it's a win-win you got a signature shoe signature bike do you have a signature yeah, bike yeah yeah i've got like two x games medals full, video full part. parts from fly shit dude i love it um cool, cool computer too cool pc yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> i mean with no next, webcam yeah you should probably get a webcam um yeah, for, for our nice next streaming our next podcast um all right so last thing this is that's not maybe it's not the last thing but in the come up interview that i just listened to they asked you what are your views on bmx versus skate videos and which one gets you more pumped to go ride and your Did answer back say... then was, Did I say skating? I like skateboarding videos, but BMX riding makes me want to go ride. And then you brought up yeah. Simone and somebody else to get you inspired yeah. to go ride. Well, that's still like the same. Honestly, like I don't really watch many videos now. Like I have, uh, I've been watching a lot more BMX videos than anything. I, I've just been. I wouldn't even say like I'm on like a BMX kick or anything. That's just like I've always liked BMX, but I feel like I'm like paying a bit more attention now than I was at a certain point. Yeah. And I like I don't watch skate videos as much as I used to. Like I just feel like I feel a lot more in tune with like my world that I'm in, you know? Oh. Like like did you see the Alex Heim video? Uh, not yet, but I saw it on my YouTube feed and I was like, I need to watch that immediately. I think I was like in the middle of something. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that was good. You I'm should definitely watch, watch this right now. immediately yeah. after. Um, but yeah, things like that, you know, just yeah. 
it's cool seeing it's just crazy to think like how how far people are still taking it when you thought it couldn't get any crazier yeah it's like it's awesome. alex i am all exactly. right where do you uh where do you go from bmx what are you going to do after bmx um you know that's another good question i don't really know um as much as i wish i had an answer and i'm as much as uh it's probably a lot of elderly people out there that are probably like you have no plan for your future you're screwing up <laughs> you're in your life you don't have a 401k um, young youngin <laughs> yeah i don't know dude like obviously we're going to try to like invest in a house and stuff and then go from there and maybe i'll try to make like smarter financial decisions not like i made bad but it would be smart to figure something out to do but um yeah i don't know i don't like to like plan too far ahead i like to try and like be in the moment as much as i can and i just like watched multiple people and heard so many stories of people like planning out their whole life and sounds one exhausting thing, one thing happens and like nothing goes the way you expect you know so it's like yeah go with the flow what's the point of stressing out something so far that's not like guaranteed at all you know and if if writing doesn't work out like i believe that an opportunity will fall into my lap at the right time you know not yeah. I, like i really don't know man it, i don't have like the right answer i don't think anyone has the right answer but um i i, might, I almost might just sound like i'm making excuses for not having a plan no, fuck <laughs> no. we could all die tomorrow dude live in the yeah, moment exactly dude like i'm just doing as much as i can with what i have now and that's all i really care about so and that's like being in that mindset has made me appreciate what I have so much more too. So it's been dope. Making me really appreciate just talking to you for two hours now. All right. Uh, so that's cool. This official, officially last one. If a, if a young kid who's super hungry and really good at bikes is trying to get sponsored, what's your advice to him? Uh, I would say just as much as like, I don't know. I always tell people like if you're doing it for money or doing it to go pro you might as well like give up now because like it's almost like you're doing it for the wrong intentions like you need to actually be passionate about what you're doing and you need to like fully dedicate yourself and your life to it um facts but yeah you, you need to be someone that's a likable person you know you need to leave great impressions on people and like word will travel around like about your personality you know like that that stuff goes far with people um and then one thing that i wish that like i probably would have done differently like i don't know if like i would change anything but at the same time like i grew up in this era of where like you need to be like core and hang on to like this cool side of something but you can still make stuff cool with like being out of your comfort zone and doing corny wacky things or whatever like yeah. people will still appreciate you if you're a good person and a good writer like yeah. it doesn't matter anymore you know the the whole thing looking at somebody doing something and saying it's cringe it's like yeah i don't know if you've seen the clip of asap rocky saying how are you gonna hate on somebody for trying for trying yeah, something exactly you know? and i i've told multiple people this but like i used to kind of be like funky about scooters i wasn't the biggest fan and then like Fernando was like, dude, like, how are you going to like hate on someone who just is doing something they love? And I was like, you know what? That's like crazy perspective change for me because now I look at myself, like I'm riding a kid's BMX bike and yeah, for real. so many people that are like, what is this 30 year old guy doing on a BMX bike? Like yeah. get a job, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I don't know. It's yeah. Just hanging on to my youth. All right. So I learned in the other podcast that you have a uh, fake tooth. You knocked your teeth out. Which which, which tooth is fake? Uh, two fronts and then this the one in between and the canine. So the canine. They're looking that, nice, though. I'll tell you that much. They're looking nice. Uh, for how much I pay for them. Today, right? <laughs> this is actually my second set because I happened to chip one of them. So this Oops. is a bridge. The front right and a canine are posts. I don't have teeth in between the middle at all. And it's like, I don't know if you can see anything, but basically <laughs> it's like, like a piece of metal on the back of that. That's holding these 
these four together. Solid, yeah. And like I blew a tooth out and it popped a piece of my jawbone out. And basically if I ever want to get like implants in between those, I need to get a bone graft. So it's like a hot diggity damn crazy surgery or yeah. um a bridge <laughs> so, i'm fine with this like i'm probably gonna live with this for the rest of my life but beats uh ever having braces because i had a gap before this so sick it's looking good man um all Thank right you. and then also i i learned that you punctured a lung which lung my right you're right i yeah. can't even imagine what that shit feels like not being able to breathe and going to the hospital and getting that surgery like if you didn't have that surgery that like day or that minute you could have died yeah well that that's actually probably the closest i've been to death for sure so wild. um not like not like it's not like a skate park kind of flat thing, rail like thing, a, right? oh dude i i dropped full body weight onto a foot and a half tall rail like it, it was bad um but yeah so i was like at the vans park and they had the old uh it was like the old uh, original huntington beach flat bar I was doing like crank to ice pick 180s and I did one and then I went to go do another and I missed back peg, dropped full body weight on my ribs and like was holding my arms above my head, like trying to catch my breath. And like guy that works at the park is trying to run over to me like, will you fill out this liability waiver? And <laughs> in my head, I'm like, I don't have, I don't have health insurance. Like I'm, I'm not signing shit. Like, I don't know what that is, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I'm just going to go home. I just broke a rib. But like, that whole time i'm like <laughs> <laughs> like trying to catch my breath and uh so i drive home like put my bike on my rack drive home and on the drive home my right arm and hand like i was, dri- I was driving manual and like my hand started like kind of getting tingly like it was going numb and uh i got back to my apartment i wasn't too far from the park luckily david and forrest my roommates were home at the time took my bike off my rack walked up a few flights of stairs and was like (laughs) like you guys have to take me to the hospital like i have to go to the hospital and uh because at that point it had been like 15 minutes 20 minutes and i was like still i was suffocating dude and uh they were like oh shit so like hopped in their car with them they drove me to the nearest hospital that was only like a couple miles away, but we parked in, we, we parked and went into the urgent care center and not the ER. And they were like, Oh, you need to go to the ER. So we walked across it. Instead of driving, we walked across this whole parking lot and they, I had like both of them around me, like each side. And like, I like can barely even hold myself up at this point. And uh, I just remember David being like, dude, it was like some Braveheart shit. You're going to make it, brother. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> it was crazy at the time. And then get to the ER, sit in the waiting room for like 10, 15 minutes. And like, dude, by the time they got me in and got me to an x-ray, it was 40 minutes of like, <laughs> like not being able to catch my breath. Like I could not get a breath of air. It was crazy. That's so scary. So they were like, yo, your lung is 40% collapsed. Like if you were to wait much longer, like you could die. Like we have to do this right now. Sign this, sign the sheet of paper, whatever. And then was in the hospital for six days. Sheesh. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It took a long time for my lung to kind of like inflate itself. So, and it's so fucked because it's always just on the little, little shit that people like get the most hurt. Scotty, yeah, for you. sure. Not to compare for Scotty sure. to you, but yeah, just no, it's no, always like, the you yeah. know the trivial shit that goes wrong. Yeah, and just doing circles around the rail, like trying to do a trick over and over and over. Like yeah. I don't know. I think uh, it was really like a big wake up call that like I need to have health insurance and take that kind of seriously. I got so lucky too, dude. Like I, I, uh, I was like 21 years old at the time and uh, got out of the hospital and I got a bill for $44,000. Oh my God. So like imagine being 21 and being $44,000 in debt and thinking like, my initial thought was my life is over. Like, I, 
Yeah, that's I've been heavy. this off for so long. This is insane. Student so, student loan type debt. <laughs> dude, for real. Um, well, are you, how's a, your insurance situation now? Well, I have insurance now, but my dad's, <laughs> my, my dad's an insurance salesman, so I got you. Oh, really? I got you on the uh, accident plug. I, He's trying to set me up on this, like thirty five bucks a month for accident insurance, which oh, covers whoa. up covers up to like fifteen grand of surgeries or some shit. I'm like, okay, oh, I'll do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I got so lucky though. I had a social worker at the hospital help me out. And basically, like, if I prove if I made under a certain amount of money for income, then, like, I could fall under, like, Medi-Cal or whatever the free health care was, Dope. which ended up retroing 90 days before my incident. So, like, Bill just disappeared. Beautiful. Yeah. I, like, that was kind of a wake-up call. Like, yo, you got you to gotta be careful and, like, be prepared for accidents to happen. So I learned from that. Any last words for the BMX nerds that are watching or listening to this? Um, uh, just ride. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of shot, honestly, right now. That's uh, pretty good. Go eat your tacos yeah, and have fun with yeah, Haley and your uh, doggos. Dude, anyone who's made it this far, thank Congrats you. on getting married, man. Thank you. Stoked I appreciate you. that. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm free too. You seem like you're doing very well. How do you see it? We're out here. Um yeah. babies? Not anytime soon. All right. But maybe Not in the future. Choice. Hopefully. I All hope right. so. <laughs> <laughs> she can't hear me, huh? Nope. <laughs> oh shit. Oh wow. <laughs> uh yeah. Oh shit. All right. Adios, amigo. <laughs> All right, later, dog. I appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah, cheers.